Hey there guys, it's me T Dude, or you could also know as Tino. And here's my year in review of 2019. Basically I just wanted to make this video of just for me, pretty much. Just to kind of chronicle what I've done in like the last year or so. So uh, a lot of this kind of happened. So basically I haven't really done this sort of type of vlogging video in like forever. So I'm gonna probably stumble through it and edit things out or whatever, but and we'll see how it goes. Uh, essentially, as I said before, it's just, it's just a video for me, pretty much. So, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking at my phone a bunch, just like trying to remember all of the stuff that's happened in the past year. Uh, because pretty much uh, this past year has been actually like cool, but also a little bit of a roller coaster, I would say, uh, in terms of stuff happening with the, the channel. Uh, and also my personal life as well, um, and it feels so long, but yet so short, I guess, because I don't know, that's how years work. Oh, by the way, I just want to say that, like, I'm recording this on January 1st, uh, so hooray, New Year Day, and, uh, let's see how everything goes. So, let's start with Mini Mantra Comic Con, even though it was 2018, that was, like, a lot of fun, like... I really love those events, especially for Mini Macho Comic Con, because that, I believe to me, that's the the perfect way to end and begin the year in terms of like the whole cosplay like music video thing that I usually do. Um, but we're gonna be going to G Anime, where um, I went to Gatineau for G Anime. This was the second time that I went to G Anime, and um, I honestly like. Revealing the curtain about back a bit. Whenever I go to these conventions, I, I I usually film a lot, right? But I never. This is really this is really revealing a little bit. But like I never really um like think ahead a bunch in terms of like what type of theme of the video I'm gonna try to go for or like what kind of song that I'm trying to go for. So going into G Anime in 2019, uh, I was like, okay. Like a particular theme and song that I want to do, um, and it happened to be the fact that I was really into My Hero Academia at that point, and I was like, okay, let's make something really cool. And uh, honestly, now looking back, that G Anime video, I'm super, at least the Volume One video, I'm super proud of, because like I I knew what I wanted to do, and um, I made it pretty stylish in terms of what I usually do. So it's still. Like, at the beginning of 2019, it was still probably one of my favorite videos I've done uh, in terms of just making it. <sighs> one of the really cool things that I got to do was G Anime 2019 was the event that really kickstarted me actually trying out photography in a serious and legit way. Um, my friend uh, Yami, like, I think it was on like, I think a Sunday or something like that where uh, she dressed up as uh, stocking from Panty and Stocking and uh, she didn't have any like, you know, pictures of her cosplay and in like a photo shoot type of setting. No, it was actually a Saturday, I believe, yeah, Saturday. And it was really cool to do that impromptu photo shoot uh, because I've done photo shoot stuff before, but I never felt like really confident in my abilities because even I'm still learning things, right? But I think definitely from now, like, looking back with 2019, I really improved a lot and learned a lot in terms of the technical aspect of filmmaking and also photography, and I think that really lends itself well to really honing my craft and trying to figure out things. So, it was really cool, it was really awesome to do that impromptu photo shoot. I'm still really proud of it, um, because if it wasn't for my friend, uh, just out of blue being like, hey, you want to do this? It's like, yeah, let's do it. So uh, I, I can't thank her enough for uh, just letting me kind of just figure things out and pumble around a photo shoot. But it was honestly a, a lot of fun to do and that really kick started my, uh, I guess, photography journey pretty much. Uh, so other than that with G Anime, uh, the one f other fun thing is uh, I'm not sure if this is becoming a tradition, but it seems like I almost died at G Anime again. <laughs> so, 
2018 G Anime was the first time I went to it, and I got food poisoning. Yeah, at a convention. And in 2019, um, the car ride back to uh, from Gatineau to Montreal, the the girl that was driving me, uh, we were having like really great conversations and stuff, and she we drove in the highway, and it was in like the weekend of a really bad blizzard, so we actually stayed in like an extra day. And she was gracious enough to drive me back home, but like we, we slid on ice and like the car turned like 180 degrees facing into oncoming traffic. So luckily we didn't hit anyone, no one got hurt, it was a little bit of a scare, but had that another near death experience uh, based off of G anime. So can't wait for G anime 2020 where um, I will brush uh, death once again and survive, hopefully. Well, so yeah. So February hits and um, I got to go to LAN ETS and Katsukon. Uh, so small little thing with LAN ETS, got to do that um, again with uh, filming the gaming events. It's always fun to do that. Uh, I've done it for at least three-ish years now, or four-ish years now. Uh, working with MachoGaming.com, so if you want to see that video, you could check it wherever I'll link it to. So there's that. Uh, Katsukon was really special because um, it's not often that I get to travel outside of Canada. So because Mar Katsukon's in Maryland, uh, near Washington D.C., and um, I have to thank Terrence, uh, the guy who pretty much he gotten. A whole bunch of people together in this group to make plans and get hotel rooms and somehow getting hotel rooms to the Gaylord Hotel that is the actual venue to Katsukon and like uh, he was dealing with like 20 plus people or something like ridiculous like that so I have to give like kudos to him for like letting me stay at his place and um, Essentially getting like a complete random stranger to like people because I was just kind of just hanging on uh, to like a friend of a friend to go to Katsukon. Because I heard that Katsukon is one of the premier conventions to go to and uh, honestly it, it actually really is, it, there was so many people, so many people there. Um, and it, it was, the journey to Katsukon was a lot of fun. Um, even though that we kind of almost died again with like swerving a bunch uh, with the van of like 10 people. Um, but honestly it was like a lot of fun to be there because I got to see the White House. I got to hang out with some Montreal friends um, at like Maryland. I got to do a whole lot of cool stuff. I got to meet so many cool people. Um, I did like four different volumes of Cats Con because I filmed a lot. <laughs> So, it was, um, man, it was such a fun experience, and I, I probably may not be going to Katsukon in 2020, but uh, I do really cherish the time that I had there, because it's not often that I get to have the opportunity to go outside of Canada to travel. So, uh, I have to thank everyone that I met there, for sure. Alright, so now going to March. Uh, March was a little bit of a down period for me in a way, um, at least in the, personally, because uh, I had to kind of like end a friendship um, where it was getting like a little bit too toxic in a way, um, which really sucks because like um, I generally really like the person, um, but like it just didn't really work out with like us, just us like butting heads. Uh, I'm usually like a pretty positive person, so it kind of really hit me hard that like I had to like do that and just cut off a person like that so um yeah personally i wasn't feeling like the best at least from there but um i basically just kind of kept through or you know kept on chugging along and with march uh what did i do in march um i went to the mario kart concert and did some pictures with uh Tawai and yami so that was a lot of fun um and i went to nadeshikon ah yes Nadeshikon. so uh nadeshikon was on, oh, wow, okay, now that I think about it, it's probably one of my favorite conventions I've been to that year because uh, it was mainly because actually of the masquerade and uh, me helping out 
uh, Twai and Yami. Uh, so if you're if you watch this YouTube channel, if you're really big into Splatoon, um, they're one of the two uh, Splatoon cosplayers that uh, I've been working with in the last year or two, and it was honestly really endearing and really awesome to see them perform in the masquerade because I, uh, I actually helped out with their audio and I filmed their performance and uh, gave it to them and posted it and like they were super happy and appreciated uh, with the reception that they got and they won awards um, I have like a small little video about it because um, like it actually really meant a lot to me too where you know, I knew them for for quite a while, and it was such a really cool achievement for them because, like, they, they put so much time and effort into their cosplays, and honestly, the, those two were like been always super good to me. So uh, I can't thank them enough for like you know just being really good friends and uh, just like cheering them on and just being really cool. Also with Neshikon, uh I got to really know a few people through like, oh, I also do some more photo shoot stuff, um, especially one person I'm going to shout out to is Acrezia Cosplay. Uh, this past 2019 has been really cool because if there's one person that I've met that really encapsulates the quality that it takes and the hard work it takes to make cosplays, it would be her. Uh, she has done like what she lacks in quantity she ma makes up in quality and um, I'm always continually impressed with the amount of like details and meticulousness and everything like that and like trying to make it as accurate and as great as possible and uh, I got to do a couple like Marf um, like pictures with her uh, and it looked really cool I'm really hoping that I get to do more stuff with her in the future um, and that will continue on in 2019 because like I got to meet her and do like lots of cool things with her. Okay so April hits and uh, the next week after Neshi Khan uh, from Quebec City was Geek It in Montreal. Um, I had the awesome opportunity to work with uh, the people at Geek It uh, making videos for them with interviews and with the trailer um, where this happened in September 2018, but I had gotten like 40 plus cosplayers all together to uh, help film a commercial for the event. And it was quite the experience to say the least, especially since it was a really hot September and we filmed like a bunch of stuff and it was, it really put my directing skills to work because it was really hard to like think of scenarios for certain people and groups. And we only had like a certain amount of time to film, uh, but with all that being said with Geek It, it was a really awesome opportunity to help start a convention, pretty much, uh, with the little way that I've done with like filming and stuff. I got to make uh, really cool videos and just film a bunch of stuff for Geek It. So um, I can't think about uh, Tom uh, for sure really helped out with like just organizing everything and he worked a lot to make Geek It into a success and um, while of course there were some stumbling blocks here and there for a first time convention it was a lot of fun and I look forward to working um, at least if not even working just being at Geek It for like a long time because uh, it was really special to have the opportunity to actually actually get paid to do like filming stuff because I don't get paid a whole lot doing like YouTube. I actually don't even have like my videos monetized at all. So um, the whole photo shoots and video shoots I do that I do get paid with really help out. Um, and uh, that was one thing that I was really happy with was I had the opportunity to uh, help with convention and also you know get paid for it. That's that's pretty nice. Uh, Alright, let's see, going through, got to go to some uh, Raw and Smackdown shows, that's awesome. Uh, Ottawa Comic Con in May. So, May had two conventions, Ottawa Comic Con and Anime North. Um, I only went to one day in, in Ottawa Comic Con, um, and I was honestly probably going to skip it, because I think at this point I was feeling a little burned out, I think, because uh, 
I was doing a lot of like video work. I was trying to like catch up. If there's one thing I want to add in, it was um, I probably could have done a lot better with organizing my time management with the uh, the times that it took for me to edit a video and release it on time. Because especially with convention videos, you want to see like if you're part of a video, you want to see it like immediately after the event. So. Um, 2019 wasn't that good in terms of like um, being pretty late with certain videos, so I, I tried to get them on time, or I tried to release them on time in a relatively quick manner, but with life in, in general, and also with picking up photography, um, I didn't know how long um, editing photos was going to take. It takes a lot shorter of a time to, to edit photos, but it, uh, it still takes time, so I kept myself really busy this 2019. So Ottawa Comic Con was a lot of fun just for like the one day. Uh, my dad came along, which he doesn't go to a lot of conventions, so it was kind of weird and fun to kind of have him tag along and see what I do usually because he doesn't really know what I do with conventions. He just sees like the final video, and of course my dad's like, not my harshest critic, but he's, he's definitely a critic for sure. And um, it was kind of fun <laughs> in, in, a, in a weird way to be like, yeah, I just go up to cosplayers and talk to them and hopefully it'll be in my video and there I go. So that was kind of fun. Um, Anime North. Oh man, Anime North. Uh, as I affectionately like to call Parking Lot Con, uh, this was, I believe, the second time I've been to Anime North. Uh, the first time I've been to, I was super overwhelmed. Oh my god. Um, Anime North is such a weird convention in the sense of it's it's really popular and really big, but i never been to a convention in which it was super, not super, but like it was spread out. Because if you've been to Anime North, there's like at least four to five different buildings or something that like has the panels and like the game room and like um, the exhibitor hall and like the masquerade and like all sorts of stuff and like most of the people are just outside in the parking lot and <laughs> uh, you know wear your sunscreen and stay hydrated because uh, I, I remember my lesson from the first year uh, so and also it hit on my uh, birthday weekend for Anime North uh, it was uh, it, it was fun. For sure. I think that was the year that, uh, or at least that was the event that I really got to know uh, series cosplay and Loki cosplay. Uh, these two girls that I've seen from time to time, and I, that was when I really got to experiment with uh, my lighting. Um, so off the side right here is like uh, an RGB light that I'm using. It's like portable enough that I could like bring it anywhere. So now I got like colored lighting in my videos. And I think now that I think about it, that was where um, I really got to use that. And because uh, one of the things that uh, I usually bring on these conventions is like a lot of lighting equipment. Because I want like the best type of lighting, especially when I'm shooting at night, uh, because I film until night. Like, it's been honestly really helpful to get like new lighting equipment and it's, that was the event that I had an impromptu photo shoot which I'll probably show some pictures on screen wherever it is and honestly it was really fun to do so yeah with Anime North it was like it was been, like Anime North it's, it's Anime North it's fun there's lots of people uh, the Christian protesters were there of course on the Sunday on my birthday of course just Trying to be, uh, you know, causing our ruckus. So one of the cool things that happened after Anime North was uh, on the trip back to Montreal with the group of friends I was with. We went to um, we went to Chuck E. Cheese, which I've never been to a Chuck E. Cheese before. And uh, since it was my birthday weekend there, kind of just celebrated at Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, it was it was some really goofy fun. It was actually kind of like a childhood dream in a way. To go to Chuck E. Cheese because like I never met a Chuck E. Cheese, I only heard about it, and uh, it was it was really fun and goofy. 
um, and I really enjoyed it. So I gotta thank them for just like going along with like me being excited to go to a Chuck E. Cheese um, in my mid 20s. So it was fun. It was a lot of fun. So June hits, and uh, the big convention there was for YetiCon. And uh, YetiCon, it was my second time there, um, and it is honestly probably one of the premier conventions that I'm going to have to go every year. Um, because it's basically in a resort. And uh, this year was different in the sense of, um, well, the first year I went to, it was just by happenstance that I got in a hotel room. Uh, because the previous group that I was with, uh, the main person that got the hotel room bailed out because uh, she wanted to see her favorite Love Life performers um, at, like, Fan Expo in, like, Los Angeles. I think it's Fan Expo or Fan Anime, whichever one it is. And, um... This year, I got in myself a hotel room when it was like first available, and um, I made a bit of a bad decision in a way in terms of uh, scheduling two rooms um, instead of the one because uh, I had such a great time the first time I went to YetiCon that um, I was convinced by the people that I went with the the, the last time. To be like, oh, I want to bring my friend over too to YetiCon and be a lot of fun. And I'm like, okay, let me pull everyone. Is it worth it for me to get a second room? And they're like, yeah, of course, it'll be great. Um, so I got a second room. And um, I got the second room like six months in advance or something like that. But the thing is that in that time frame, things can change. Um, and that meant that of the five people that I originally went with from the last year, um, three of them that was going to bring like plus ones basically had to bail out. So um, essentially at the like the last month or two I was just scrambling to find people to fill in the room because like I ordered two rooms and I wasn't really gonna bother with trying to like sell off the room or something like that. So I had to deal with like 16 to 17 people in this group to go to YetiCon um, and I had massive respect to uh, the guy I mentioned before Terrence uh, because it was quite a lot of work to try to get everyone together and also getting everyone's money too because we all had to help pay for the hotel room and yeah uh, I still had a lot of fun at YetiCon though it was such a like a chill, relaxing time. It did rain on Saturday. I remember that being like a thing, and got to hang out with some cosplayer friends and just like chill a lot more. I think YetiCon was definitely the kind of the start in which I kind of realized that I was just kind of like chilling a lot more and not overworking myself, because I tend to try to film as much as I can at these conventions, and YetiCon I was really trying to just chill and relax and just have fun and still try to make some quality videos for sure but it was like a lot of fun just to kind of like do that so um honestly YetiCon it was still a lot of fun um still booked my hotel room for next year so I'm definitely going to YetiCon in 2020 and uh it was again it was a lot of fun so July hits and Macho Comic Con hits and I have the really cool opportunity to do the Marvel Superhero Cosplay Group video. And uh, it's doing pretty well right now on YouTube, and it was quite the adventure, uh, or at least planning-wise, to try to get a lot of these uh, cosplayers in the like, Marvel Universe. And uh, I have to really thank Rob for uh, help organizing it. He used the, the gambit in the video. And uh, I can't believe that we actually got to do it, especially in the way that we did, because like, with 40 plus people, the best way to kind of film was outside, but this was in the middle of Macho Comic Con, outside, in downtown Montreal, with a bunch of people around who were not part of the convention, who sees a bunch of superheroes, because superheroes are really big right now, and <laughs> like, it was really funny trying to just shoo away people just in the fr frame or in the shot because I'm trying to like make something or I'm trying to make like a 
like a short film pretty much, or just like showcasing all the cosplayers. Um, my best friend, uh, Jeremy, he helped out and almost got like coffee thrown at him <laughs> when trying to like move or like tell people to move from like this one like old lady or something like that. So uh, thanks Jeremy uh, for almost getting coffee thrown at him. And um, it was really an, an awesome experience. I spent, it was supposed to take like I think an, like an hour or two but to end up taking like three or four because I kind of knew that like I wanted to get pretty much everyone into the video. So um, I'm really proud of how that video turned out. I think it turned out pretty fun. So definitely go give it a watch. It's fun. For Montreal Comic Con. Um, yeah, other than that, like it was it was a fun event for sure. Um, got to do some more photo shoot stuff. Pretty much just like yeah, you know, just do my usual thing. Uh, I can't remember what I really did Montreal Comic Con. Let me just take a look at what I did. Uh, Alright, so looking around, um, oh yeah, Splatoon Week, that was a thing, um, I'm not sure if it's in chronological order or not, but Splatoon Week was a lot of fun, especially on my Facebook and Instagram, by the way, if you haven't, uh, please follow me on Instagram and Facebook for exclusive content, since I've done uh, smaller videos and also like pictures and stuff on those platforms, so if you want more like cosplay related videos that I've done, then definitely follow me on Facebook and Instagram because I like a lot more stuff like that. So, Montreal Comic Con, yeah, so that happened. Uh, okay, Pixelmania. So, uh, if you do follow me on Instagram or Facebook, um, I was selected to be a part of Pixelmania, uh, which is this exclusive like cosplay event held in Poland. The whole point of that event, or yeah, I think it's pretty much like an event, where um, you get like cosplayers and uh, like photographers and videographers together and they just make content uh, there. It was a super humbling thing to receive the email back being like, you have been selected to participate in Pixelmania 2K or like 2019. And wow, uh, I felt really humbled. Uh, to that because I've been only doing this type of like cosplay related stuff for like around four ish years now and I still feel like I still have lots to learn but um, I just remember like because you have to like apply to this type of event uh, which is interesting to say the least and um, I just did it because I just was like I, I don't know let's let's just do it like not fully expecting to get like a response but I did and it was really cool, but I didn't go because uh, it's in Poland, I live in Canada, the plane ride ticket would probably cost about a grand, and uh, I don't necessarily have a grand to just kind of spend like that, and then like probably an additional hundreds of dollars just to be like, okay, well, I have a place to stay and eat and whatever, and probably stay there for like a few days. It does kind of suck that I wasn't able to go, but... At that point, like, I've, I've been to Katsukon, I've been to, like, uh, at that point, like, every month I've been to at least one convention, sometimes two conventions once per month, or, or something like that, and, um, I'm hoping that, like, I'll have the opportunity to go to Pixelmania at some other time later date, maybe in 2020, maybe in some other years or so, because, um, it was a really humbling experience to be like, wow, I felt like I kind of made it in a way where like I saw some of the people that got selected and be like wow like I, I got I got in like wow so um unfortunately I couldn't go but still I'm I'm really happy that I got selected to be a part of that Otakuthon so Otakuthon um, was probably the busiest convention weekend of I, I've had and it was probably the most successful in terms of bookings. Otakuthon is always a really popular convention, um, especially in Montreal. And um, it was really cool to get like, to just be really busy and, and kind of get paid for my work sometimes because, uh, hey, I, go to these, uh, I usually go to these conventions at a loss in a way. I do try to get media pa passes for sure, but like, you know, I, I do this to go to conventions just to have, you know, to, to have fun and to create content because I really enjoy making these videos um, and meeting the really cool people. So, 
Uh, the fact that I had like, I don't know, like eight different bookings or something like that with like photo shoots and video shoots um, was really cool. So yeah, a lot of stuff happened there with, uh, I got to see the really cool Super Smash Bros. Ultimate cosplay group. I got to like film some stuff there. I got to film, what is it, like uh, some videos and some photo shoots. It was quite the busy and kind of chaotic convention because like I was also trying to hang out with some of my best friends as well. We got to go to the TM Revolution concert since uh, I, I, I like that guy, that guy's awesome. Like, we, uh, we got to, I got to meet, like, so many people there, and just, like, hang out, just have fun. Um, it was, honestly, a really fun weekend. Uh, really busy, but also really fun. So, the next one in September would be DreamHack Montreal. So, um, I again had the opportunity to work with MontrealGaming.com to basically film a highlight reel of the event. Um, what I kind of just remember it is, uh, this was, I think, the second time that it was in the... Olympic Stadium, the Montreal Olympic Stadium, and uh, man, it's really, it's really cool. Like it's actually like, there. It was like a lot of fun. I got to do uh, some like a smaller cosplay video and stuff, and yeah, I'll just kind of work on it. It was again a lot of fun just to be there. Okay, so October. Um, so at the end of September and like sort of October, I was in like a little bit of a, a down, like a downer. Um, I can't really, like. It's kind of hard to like really remember, but I just didn't feel like myself, um, especially since I think at that point burnout was becoming a big thing for me with uh, trying to work on the YouTube channel and trying to like finish like my work pretty much because I took on a lot of work um, and was a little, it was kind of struggling to try to finish everything in a timely manner. I'm lucky that as of right now that I only have like a f couple more things to kind of finish and since I'm on vacation I'm gonna try to finish them as fast as I can but uh, I just remember just being kind of like really down and just not feeling like myself uh, so um, which kind of rolls around with Laval Comic Con now, if you did see me at Laval Comic Con, um, that's awesome, that's really cool. Um, unfortunately, um, it wasn't a really good convention for me. Um, I'm not gonna get too much into details, but I'll just say that um, I, I upset the friend, and um, it was and didn't really work out well with trying to talk to that friend during that convention. Um, luckily, we, we reconciled and we talked things out later, but uh, it wasn't a really good convention, and I had to leave early because because uh, of reasons, pretty much. Um, again, not gonna get too much details because I still don't want to like bring up that like emotional. It, it kind of did affect me pretty badly with the bad experience that I had at Lavelle ComCon. Um, so uh, if you did see me, hey, thank you very much for doing that. But yeah. Um, wasn't a really good convention and it was actually kind of the first really bad like convention experience I had so yeah um, the next week after that was Quebec Comic Con <laughs> so um, so after dealing with the really bad Laval Comic Con experience that I had um, Quebec Comic Con was the thing that I kind of needed to really recharge myself and really enjoy what I was doing again. I did kind of notice that I didn't film as lot, as much as I did, but um, I got to just hang out with a lot of really good people. And uh, it was just what I kind of needed to just like go to Quebec City, you know, experience the sights and sounds and have fun. Almost had a drunk dude uh, stalk me and my friends. Uh, so yay! <laughs> so that's a story for another day, um, and uh, honestly, it was it was a really fun time because I got to just uh, hang out with friends. So um, Quebec Comic Con was what I kind of needed to try to recharge my batteries and just be like, yeah, I could do this. So um, at the end of October, I got to do 
the Walking Dead fan film. Uh, I have to thank Series and Loki Cosplay for uh, giving me the opportunity to do such a really cool video. Pretty much I, I got to know them a lot better throughout the year and they got to... They, they cosplayed as uh, Violet and Clementine from The Walking Dead The Final Season, the game. And um, fun fact, uh, I have my name in the credits of that game because uh, I'm also a, a FQA tester or a video game tester, so I got to test that game. Uh, so luckily, uh, it's out now so I can talk about it, yay! And I'm really proud that I got to work on that game, and I'm really proud that in a way to kind of bookend my journey with testing that game, um, because I really appreciate, like, that video game there, because I got to work on it a lot. And, um, I got to work on that fan film, and it was so much fun. I'm really hoping that I get to do more fan films like that in the future, because it was just a lot of fun to just organize everything and trying to uh, just make something that uh, I'm really proud of with entertaining people. Because uh, one of the big things I like to do with YouTube is just like, I like to entertain people with videos. So it was a lot of fun just figuring things out and like trying to make it really cinematic. And uh, I can't thank Loki and Series enough for uh, just being really cool people. They they were like super down for it and they never done anything like that before with like acting in like a camera. So it was such a fun time and I have to thank every single one of my friends and the people that uh, I recruited to help in with people who play as the zombies and the makeup artists and like uh, just trying to find supplies and items and the, the housing um, and everything like that and it was such a blast and I'm really hoping that with 2020 I get to do more fan films. At, at the very least I'm going to promise one fan film in 2020. So uh, please look forward to that, it was a lot of fun. So November hits and November is the first month out of 2019 where yeah, it's, it's like the second last month where I didn't have any sort of convention to go to. Uh, because uh, I probably could have went to the uh, Ottawa Comic Con holiday event. But um, November was the month that I kind of needed that break. Because uh, at that point in time, I've been to, I think, like 13 or 14 conventions. I'm going to put like the actual number on screen. Um, at that point in time, <laughs> so I kept myself really busy. November was just the month I kind of needed just to kind of recharge and uh, try to finish all of my projects as much as I can. And uh, it was it was a good fun time to do that. I did some side projects here and there, which I still have to finish. But yeah, it was it was fun to actually just kind of chill for a little bit and just kind of concentrate on my work. And now, uh, going into December of 2019, uh, Mini Montreal Comic Con, it's a very special event because um, if you didn't know, Mini Montreal Comic Con was the first event that I started doing this. The whole, like, being serious with YouTube and, like, doing the cosplay music video stuff. And it was, uh, it was a lot of fun, just like, um, you know, I got to take some bookings and stuff. I got to just hang out with some friends. I got to make new friends along the way. Uh, recently, I just went to a, uh, a wrestling event with a cosplayer friend who, like, I was talking and out of the blue, I just mentioned it and she was like, yeah, let's go to it. It's like, oh, what? yeah, yeah, let's go. It was, again, it was a lot of fun to go to Mini Macho Comic Con because I have, it, you know, it's a special place in my heart for that event, even if it's just a smaller, like, you know, convention where you just, like, buy stuff or whatever it is. It was, it was great to, you know, kind of end 2019 on a good note there. 2019 was a year that was really interesting, to say the least. Uh, my Splatoon content, because I know that a lot of people who, uh, who follow this channel love Splatoon. Or at least, you know, my most popular videos is Splatoon. I got to do some more Splatoon stuff there, so um, I'm, I'm always down to do more Splatoon cosplay videos with the people that I know. 
Um, I got to start doing photography more often. I got to really learn about it. Uh, I have to thank everyone that like was a part of it in terms of uh, booking a photo shoot or doing an impromptu photo shoot or uh, me asking photographers for advice and tips and help. I have to, again, thank everyone involved for uh, helping me in this journey to become better with uh, you know, making content and making videos and making pictures and all sorts of cool stuff. There's plenty of people that I have to kind of thank and I want to thank as much people as possible but um, again I'll try to thank a bunch of people with uh, Yami and Tawai um, and Anika, Gummy Cat and Crazia Cosplay and Miel Cos, um, Loki and Series Cosplay, Rob uh, from the uh, Marvel superhero group, like, uh, what's it, uh, Marie and Lily of uh, Marley Cosplay, they were like really awesome, like Siren as well, uh, like all these people like uh, really made 2019 uh, a lot of fun and special. I put a lot of time and effort into uh, just making videos for you guys uh, that I hopefully you enjoy and I'm really hoping that with 2020 I get to do more of that kind of stuff. I get to experiment a little and uh, just continue what I've been doing just steadily growing and growing because uh, with the 3,000 subscribers plus that I have gotten so far um, I've been doing YouTube or if I had a YouTube account since like 2008 or something ridiculous like that. So I have like 12 year old videos that I still have on my YouTube channel. Um, because to me it's a badge of honor that like I've come so far from making dumb gameplay videos uh, to trying to go to events and like doing more cosplay stuff. Uh, I really can't thank enough uh, everyone that I have met throughout the way. Uh, not just in 2019 but throughout the I guess the decade as well and uh, with the last four the five-ish years that I've been doing this stuff um, because it's not a whole lot of uh, opportunities for me just to talk directly to my I guess fan base or uh, the people that enjoy my content so uh, if you stuck around for so long in this long random uh, rambling video of me just talking about my life in 2019 Thank you so, so much. Uh, I really appreciate it. It's been a really cool journey, to say at least. I'm going to, again, keep being awesome and uh, just keep making cool things. So, again, thank you guys so much. Take care. And with 2020, please look forward to more awesome cosplay-related stuff. Hey, even more cool stuff. So, again, thank you so much, guys.